Welcome to the BioWhisperer channel. Our topic today is on a perspective overview of cell lines in life sciences. Biotechnology has evolved to include elements of both natural and engineering sciences. Advanced techniques are used to isolate the unique properties of living organisms, cells, and their components. These raw materials are then cultivated in labs and used to make a myriad of useful products, from vaccines and cancer therapies to herbicides and biocontrol solutions. Biopharmaceuticals are the main drugs developed in the pharma sector. Market demand has instigated the development of various protein expression hosts and bioprocessing technologies. Part of a highly specialized field called bioprocessing. Cell lines play a critical role in biotechnology. The term describes a set of plant or animal cells grown in a laboratory and sustained in a culture to preserve their unique functions and phenotypes. Lab-grown cell lines are generally clonal, which means all cells in the group stem from a single, shared ancestor. This ancestor cell is usually a primary culture extracted directly from plant or animal material. The clonal nature of cell lines makes it easy to repeatedly propagate cells, often indefinitely. Derived from the kidney of an African green monkey, Cercopithecus ethiops, in the 1960s, Vero cells are one of the most common mammalian continuous cell lines used in research. This anchorage-dependent cell line has been used extensively in virology studies, but has also been used in many other applications, including the propagation and study of intracellular bacteria, for example rickettsia and parasites, for example neospora, and assessment of the effects of chemicals, toxins, and other substances on mammalian cells at the molecular level. In addition, Vero cells have been deployed for the production of both live, rotavirus, smallpox, and inactivated, poliovirus, viral vaccines, and throughout the world Vero cells have been used for the production of a number of other viruses, including rabies virus, rheovirus, and Japanese encephalitis virus. The HeLa cell line is another famous lineage. In 1951, Henrietta Lacks came into John Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, worried about a lump in her abdomen, where she was diagnosed and treated for cervical cancer, adenocarcinoma of the cervix, a particularly aggressive type of cancer. She eventually died of her cancer later that year, without knowing what her cells would help accomplish the development of therapeutic research. Since then, the HeLa lineage has helped drive a constellation of medical breakthroughs, including the development of polio vaccines and treatments for AIDS and leukemia. The HeLa cell line was the first successful attempt at immortalizing human-derived cells in vitro. In the past, researchers spent more time trying to keep cells alive than performing actual experiments. Soon after the discovery and availability of the HeLa cell line gave researchers the time and the possibility to conduct repeatable experiments on human cells, without testing directly on humans. And to this day, HeLa cells have saved countless lives, and many scientific landmarks, such as cloning, gene mapping, in vitro fertilization, the polio vaccine, have been achieved with the use of HeLa cells. Let's focus on some of the critical parameters and troubleshooting. One of the most common sources of contamination in cell cultures is mycoplasma. These bacteria are very small, often less than 1 micrometer, and therefore contamination with mycoplasma may not be visible with the naked eye, making these organisms difficult to detect. Several mycoplasma detection kits are commercially available for instance such as the MycoAlert kit from Lanza. To reduce the risk of contamination, always work with the cells in a sterile, laminar flow hood, Make sure all equipment and solutions that come into contact with the cells are sterile and use proper sterile technique when working in the hood. Many researchers will maintain their cells with a low level of antibiotic added to the medium, most commonly a penicillin slash streptomycin mixture. However, depending on the application for which the Vero cells will be used, adding antibiotics may not be recommended, for example, if the cells are to be infected with bacteria. Let's quickly discuss the scaling of cell lines. Certain applications, such as vaccine production, may require the scaling up of Vero cell cultures. There are two growth systems used for the scaling up of anchorage-dependent cell lines, roller bottles and microcarriers. Roller bottles are cylindrical vessels, and the cells grow on the inner surface of the tube. The bottles slowly revolve to continually bathe the cells in growth medium. The surface area available for cell attachment can be even further increased by growing the cells on microcarrier beads. The beads, usually around 0.2 mm, can be made of dextrin, cellulose, gelatin, glass or silica, and can considerably increase the surface area available for vero cell growth.
Since then, cell lines have been rationally engineered and designed for compliant biomanufacturing. As we discuss bioprocessing and scaled manufacturing, we need to understand that having the ideal cell line which maintains favorable growth and productivity characteristics is vital for biopharmaceutical manufacturing processes, whether we are producing monoclonal antibodies, recombinant proteins, or viral vectors for gene therapies. Having ready-to-use cell line systems can accelerate the upstream development by greatly reducing the time, cost, and risk of developing new cell lines. Let's do a quick review thus far and envisage the perspectives forward. Recent progress in the area of recombinant DNA technologies has paved the way to producing recombinant proteins that can be used as therapeutics, vaccines, and diagnostic reagents. Recombinant proteins for these applications are mainly produced using prokaryotic and eukaryotic expression host systems such as mammalian cells, bacteria, yeast, insect cells, and transgenic plants at laboratory scale as well as in large-scale settings. The development of efficient bioprocessing strategies is crucial for industrial production of recombinant proteins of therapeutic and prophylactic importance. Recently, advances have been made in the various areas of bioprocessing and are being utilized to develop effective processes for producing recombinant proteins. These include the use of high-throughput devices for effective bioprocess optimization and of disposable systems, continuous upstream processing, continuous chromatography and integrated continuous bioprocessing. We expect more therapeutic applications such as integrated continuous bioprocessing which is currently gaining importance due to competition over product stability and cost to anchor the bioprocess manufacturing industry in the years forward. Hope you have enjoyed our sharing and see you in the next video. We would thank you for helping to share your love for this science channel by clicking the like button and subscribe for future updates.